problems right for now. First one we're going to start with is 11. We'll just read it um, and see if we can see which one it says correctly. So which proportion represents the situation below? A machine part is a 12 inch by 18.5 inch rectangle with an area of 222 inches width. To create a print of the part of the longest size, it needs to be reduced to 14 inches. So the first thing, the longest side, needs to be reduced. So the longest side to begin with is 18, and needs to be reduced to 14. So let's see if we can find something that starts at one place and it ends somewhere else. Um, here they're in the same place, and I don't see it happening anywhere else. So right now they're saying that we started with 12 by 18. The longest side needs to be reduced, and then we'll find out what the other side is. Really doesn't matter what our area is, because it looks like this is our only possible solution. It should go into, in this case, we started our longest side and we made it long. So whatever happens this one, we're gonna do the same thing. In proportion, you'll get the same answer. We know we solve proportions by cross multiplying, so I'll let you do that. But in order to do that, you need to put parentheses on anything more than one term. So when you cross multiply, you can have four times the quantity 2x minus 7. In between there, we just put our equal sign, and then we cross across the other way with 12 times the quantity x minus 5. So when you distribute from both sides, you'll be able to solve for your correct answer. Number 15, my best suggestion here is to plug it in and see if it works for both. So you're going to plug in for your x and y for both inequalities and see if it works. Remember this is less than or equal to and the bottom one is greater than or equal to. So that's just something we like to call plug and shove. Plug it in, work through the entire solution, see if it works. If it works for both of these, then you know you found your ordered pair. For number 16, that's a little bit different. Um, we have an absolute value here. Uh, and in order to solve this, we actually have to kind of add something to it. So we're going to drop our absolute value bars. But then we're also going to add the opposite answer to the other side. So in order to solve this, we're just going to work through <coughs> my thing where I'm with. Looks a little bit weird, but we'll break it up because there's an and. So if x is less than 4, if we work backwards, x is greater than or equal or greater than negative 5. That would be right here. So I guess a rule of thumb would be. Um, as long as there's nothing around your absolute value bars, which are right here, and you have just the solution on this side, you would add the same symbol in front and then add the negative. If it gave you, yep, that's about it. If they said that this absolute value bar was less than a negative number, then you know it would be not true because it can never, an absolute value can never be negative. So, just something to think about. Um, number 17, I can give you some great hints here. The first hint I'm going to tell you is that these are both or equal to or equal to with that extra line, so you know your dots have to be filled in. You see what I mean? So, this would work, this would work, but these would not because it's say or equal to. So, because of that, it can't be that one. Because of that, it can't be this one. Even better, if the variable is in the middle, my x is in the middle of those two, then your shading needs to be in the middle. Your solution is between negative two and four, including those numbers. So since your solution's in the middle, that's where your shading should be. Your answer has to be C. And that wraps up this one section. Thank you.